Hi guys, thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about a very specialized condition called portal hypertension. Because in this season we are talking about liver problems, portal hypertension is a very important condition which is basically affected by the liver. What does portal hypertension mean? Hypertension, as we all know, means high blood pressure. All our blood vessels, how small or how big they are, whether they are arteries or they are veins, they all have pressure inside the blood vessels. Otherwise, our blood will not move. What creates that pressure? Usually the pumping of the heart creates that pressure. If the blood pressure in most people is normal, so they are called normotensive, which means normal pressure. If they've got low blood pressure, like somebody is bleeding or somebody is not feeling very well, blood pressure is very low, they are called hypotension. If somebody's blood pressure is very high, like many people have high blood pressure, they are called hypertensive or they have hypertension. If the blood pressure is high in the portal vein, then it is called portal hypertension. Now I'll just explain what portal vein is. I have discussed portal vein in my previous videos on the anatomy of the liver and the functions of the liver. So do feel free to watch those videos, give you more information. But I'll just briefly describe what the portal vein is and how does the pressure inside the portal vein go up. So just to explain this diagram, I've drawn the liver in the red and I've drawn these crisscrosses in the liver, which is area of scarring in the liver. As we know, if something gets damaged in the body, like we have a cut on the skin, it heals by scar tissue. So we always leave a scar. Similarly, if liver get disease in it, say for example, damage from drinking too much alcohol for a long period of time. Another example, if somebody gets hepatitis, then the, if it heals, the liver may be left with some damage. And when the damage heals, it heals by scar tissue. And if it's very advanced scar tissue, then it's called cirrhosis of the liver. I've drawn a piece of intestine over there which is our small intestine and from it comes a blood vessel which is called the portal vein. This is the main portal vein. It's a very big vein. It's almost size of my little finger. So it's a quite substantial size vein and it brings all the nutrition from the intestine that we eat into the liver. Because as I discussed in my previous video on the functions of the liver, liver does change all the food we eat into things that our body can use. So building blocks of the body are usually made by the liver or most of them anyway. And all the waste products that comes from the breakdown of those building blocks is detoxified by the liver so it becomes less harmful to our body, especially a substance called ammonia. This is the spleen. A big blood vessel comes out of the spleen and joins the portal vein. And inside the liver, the portal vein like branches of a tree divide into smaller branches, smaller branches, and this is the main blood supply to the liver. So almost 75% or 80% of the liver blood flow comes through the portal vein. And when the liver has used up all the blood, all the dirty blood used up from the liver goes out of the liver into the heart up here through the hepatic veins. These are the two hepatic veins. Now what happens in portal hypertension? Portal vein up to here is okay, you know, in this case it's okay, but the problem is all these little branches of the portal vein are going to the area of scarring. You can see there is scar here, so this will block the portal vein over here. There is scar over here, this will block the branch of the portal vein over here. Similarly over here will block the branch of the portal vein. So it's like having a hose pipe which has got a kink in it and the pressure in the hose pipe below the kink increases. So because the portal vein is being kinked in these areas, the pressure in this part of the portal vein increases. So it becomes bigger and bigger because the pressure is increasing and the portal vein is a very soft, thin structure. It's like stretching a balloon. When you blow air into it, it becomes bigger and bigger and the wall becomes thinner and thinner. And that's exactly what's happening with the portal vein because the pressure is building above it the blood can't go through easily and the blood pressure in the portal vein increases and this is called portal hypertension. What happens as a result? The portal vein becomes bigger than it normally is because like a balloon is stretching 
all the branches coming from the portal vein like this one to the spleen also stretches becomes bigger the spleen can't pump the blood through the, the spleen becomes big so in, in portal hypertension the spleen is quite big because it can't empty the blood the blood vessels in, inside the intestine they stretch they dilate like we get varicose veins on our legs people have dilated blood vessels in the way in the legs called varicose veins same thing because the pressure is very high in the intestine the blood vessels in the intestine and in the stomach and in the lower part of our gullet the esophagus they all become stretched they become multiple times bigger than they normally are and these are called varices like varicose veins in the leg these are varicose veins of our intestine they are more common around the lower end of the gullet or esophagus upper part of the stomach but it can also happen in other parts of the intestine and because they are stretched they are very thin like a balloon being stretched by blowing air into it it can very easily burst these blood vessels can very easily burst and one of the problem that can happen from portal hypertension to these patients is torrential bleeding if these blood vessels in the gullet or in the stomach or elsewhere in the intestine burst they can get very heavy bleeding which might show as vomiting blood or passing black tarry stools or even blood in the poo and these are very very sick patients what else can block these blood vessels the portal vein not just the scarring but also if there are any clots in the vein over here like people get thrombosis of the veins portal vein get can get thrombosis as well or thrombosis of the veins which are draining the liver the hepatic vein they can get blood clot in it and that can also increase the pressure inside the portal vein and give rise to same problems dilated blood vessel big spleen uh, and swollen liver and the blood vessels inside the intestine will dilate and stretch and can bleed another problem that can happen with portal hypertension because the liver is not working normally because liver is badly scarred in this case say for cirrhosis all the toxins all the nasty thing that are coming from the intestine which normally liver takes care of and makes it less harmful to our body the liver can't do that anymore and those toxins will go into our main blood stream to the heart and to our brain and make the patient very very confused they get tremor in their hands so hands start shaking they become very confused delirious and sometimes they can even go into coma so just to summarize the symptoms of portal hypertension early portal hypertension which is mild and early probably will not have any symptoms however once the blood vessels inside the liver the portal vein is blocked and the pressure is very high then the symptoms obviously include a very large spleen swollen abdomen because they can get fluid inside the tummy called ascites they get swollen legs because the pressure in the tummy does not let the blood from the legs empty completely their proteins are very low the liver is small and shrunken so if the patient had a scan the liver will look very shrunken and very scarred it looks like a knobbly liver because it's got cirrhosis in it and the portal vein will show no flow in it with a scan also these patients if they are very very sick they might be vomiting blood or passing blood in their poo or might be very very confused with tremor yeah, delirium and sometime even comatose so those are the main symptoms of moderate to severe portal hypertension so what is the treatment for portal hypertension most patients who develop portal hypertension will require treatment for life because in many patients it's not a curable condition so the if they are stable they have mild to moderate portal hypertension however they got no severe bleeding no encephalopathy etc which means encephalopathy Uh, is the same thing in which the patient get confused delirious and get comatose which means all the brain functions are not working properly then if they are stable then the treatment is medical treatment and the main, main medical treatment is either beta blockers like a propranolol which reduces the pressure inside the portal vein and uh, injection called octreotide which is given so frequently to reduce the pressure inside the portal vein
Problem happens when these patients come into the hospital with torrential bleeding because the time available to treat these patients is very limited. And also, sometimes these patients might come into the hospital in the middle of the night or on a weekend or on a bank holiday when uh, normal hospital services are not working or in a place in a hospital where advanced services are not available. So these patients have to be controlled. The bleeding has to be somehow controlled and stopped. The first line of treatment that most patients will have is the medical treatment. Like I already explained in my earlier slide that medications like propranolol or octreotide will be able to reduce the pressure in the portal vein. Their blood that they have lost from bleeding can be replaced by more blood as the liver is not functioning normally and I discussed in my previous video that liver also forms clotting factors which makes our blood clot. Because the liver is not functioning, those clotting factors will need to be replaced and again can be replaced with blood transfusion. Sometimes these patients, if they are still bleeding a lot, then as an emergency a tube can be put down through their mouth into the lower part of the esophagus and stomach with a balloon which is inflated to press these blood vessels for them to stop bleeding. But this is only a temporary measure until an endoscopy can be done and through an endoscope, which is a camera down the mouth into the stomach and in the esophagus, an elastic band or an injection can be given into the bleeding varices and hopefully that should be able to control the bleeding. Last but not the least, in some patients, in very specialized centers which have got big units which look after liver patients, they can do shunting. Shunting basically means if the pressure in here is very high in portal hypertension, the doctors can put a metal tube between the hepatic veins which is above the liver and across through the liver into this tube. So all the pressure in here goes directly into the vein above the liver bypassing the liver. So all these blocked blood vessels are bypassed. So the pressure in here will go down because it's draining much easier. Now this can be done in the x-ray department by either the x-ray doctors or liver specialists by a procedure called TIPS, which is transjugular intrahepatic porta systemic shunt, which is basically done through a little needle inside the vein in the neck and a plastic tube is put down through which a metal stent is put through here to here. No major operation is required. In some patients, in some centers, a surgical shunt can be put when part of the portal vein will be bypassed to a different blood vessel so all the pressure is taken away from the vein. These are very major procedures and these procedures are only meant for a small number of patients, not every patient is suitable for it. They have to be fit for these procedures because some of the side effects from these procedures can themselves be life-threatening. So I tried covering portal hypertension as basic as I could. It's a very specialized condition. These patients are extremely sick, have severe liver failure and liver disease. I hope you found this video informative and if you did then please remember to like and subscribe thank you for watching and i see you next time